Hello, and welcome everybody to Flickr Effect, a uh, special little bonus episode. Uh, I'm David Lott, by the way, and uh, joining me for this little fun shindig, if you will, is our guest for this, and that is Carlton Card. How's it going, Carlton? Oh, hey. Hey, hey. How's it going? Uh, I thought it would be fun to bring back the, the original Flickr Effect cast here during our coronavirus quarantine experience and check right, in with yeah. you. So it's, it's, it's a little hard to say that I'm busy when I'm literally not busy. Right. I knew that there was no way you could try to convince me that you weren't available to do this. There so. is a way. It just would have been very successful. Right. So how's it going, man? It's been a while. You know, hey. It's been a while since you've been on the show. We talk all the time. Yeah, but... it's been a, we talk all the time. It's been a while since I've been on the show. Um, probably around day 30 without taking a shower. Um, so that's a little confession for everybody watching the show. 30 <laughs> days, no shower. Um, and that is ripe. Actually, it what you'll find is if you don't take a shower for 30 days, the first four days will be pretty ripe. By the seventh day, you'll be extremely ripe, but then you just have a consistent level of ripeness over the next 20 days. So you don't really notice how ripe you really are after 30 days of not taking a shower. It's really amazing. You should try it. How many days have you gone without taking a shower, David? Uh, I took a shower this morning after I went for a run. Okay. Well, prior to that. Uh, I've basically had a shower every day. I'm sorry. I don't have any. Con every day. <laughs> every, every day. day. <laughs> See, you, I don't. You're not really approaching this with the type of vigor and effort that you need to. You, this is the time as an individual that you have to relearn yourself, relearn your body, relearn your habits. Hmm. So things such as uh, taking a shower is a really good way to understand what your particular body does. Some people are not very ripe after four days of not taking a shower. Some people, it takes like that 15th day so you can see what your level of expiration is. Unless you know your own expiration date from a ripeness, you're really not learning about yourself. Well, I'll I'll take that into consideration. Absolutely. The thing is, I'm yeah. I'm still I'm still having to work. I'm still having to actually go to work. I know you're working as well, but you've been working from home. Right. Uh, I I still have to go to a job and work around other people. So I don't know how but, far but again, I'm willing to take feet, that kind of experiment. Away. I think. I think the ripeness of how you smell, the six feet of distance, if six feet of distance is safe enough for you not to get any kind of um, bodily germs, I think six feet is good enough not to necessarily smell the ripeness of another. So six feet apparently is very safe for a lot of things. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, so when was the last time you did the podcast? I can't remember. I know you've done I, kind of some I want to say ones. maybe 2012, maybe. What? That long ago? No. Yeah, How long have yeah. I been doing the podcast? I don't... Longer than uh, 2012. All right. So let's say 20... Oh, man. I, gotta, I don't even remember what year we started. 13... It was... And actually, I want to say our anniversary is coming up pretty soon. So I'm going to We started about 2011. I want to say possibly 20... Maybe 2014. Here, here we go. I'm going to try to see. Ooh, here we go. Now, wow. now there were well, times when, when where think, it might have been on. When do you think we started so, again? So 2011. 2011. You got that right. Yeah. Well, because I didn't have a my own PC until 2011, so that, that makes the math really easy. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, our first uh, podcast, we reviewed uh, Green Lantern back in June of 2011. June twenty first is our movie. is our podcast birthday. Wonderful movie. You were you were one of the few who says that. 
it's a classic right up there with Casablanca. Um, <laughs> it's right up there with uh, Goodfellas. Some would say it is the comic version of Goodfellas. It is the it is the MCU version of Goodfellas is what Greenlander would be. Uh-huh. More probably like Mean Streets, which was like misunderstood um, during its time, but um, uh, much like much like not taking a shower, its ripeness um, definitely becomes more appreciated over time. So we we obviously can't cover everything you've been watching and enjoying and hating since the last time we talked on the podcast. Obviously, like I said, you and I chat. I know. Some of the stuff you've been enjoying lately, the gentleman comes to mind. Which, Absolutely. Um, what else is, have you been watching lately that you've been uh, been liking or hating? So the gen- the gentleman's definitely one of them. Uh, I'm uh, obviously Westworld. Um, yeah, I'm way behind on Westworld. I still have to. I need to just go back and start season two over and w- watch season two. It's it's worth it because it's there's so much going on. Um, season two really sets up season three really well. Um, completed season two of Altered Carbon, um, which if you watch Altered Car- Carbon at the same time of doing Westworld, I think it's a great combination because there's a lot of overlapping concepts of how um, sleeving uh, affects overall humanity um, and consciousness. And what is either the value of a person or what is the value of a being if all you can do is switch your consciousness from one sleeve or in Westworld host body to another. It, 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 it gives a lot of similarities from a Westworld standpoint. Uh, so it's really interesting um, watching Altered Carbon and Westworld together. I can think of what I definitely haven't been watching. What I definitely have not been watching and I refuse to watch is Tiger King. <laughs> you refuse to watch it. <laughs> a lot of people are really into Tiger King. It's a thing. And I think a lot of the, the majority of the people that are really into it never lived in Florida. So if you grew up and raised in Florida, the concept of a weird... B, C, D level wrestling character uh, that after retirement decides to raise his full grown tigers yet never gets eaten. That is a very common scenario that you would see in the state of Florida, regardless of area, whether South Florida, the Panhandle, the Big Bend, North Northeast Florida, um, the Keys. You could pretty much find that dude and people like him anywhere in Florida if you look. Pre- if you don't even have to look that hard. Really, if you just take about 30 minutes or so, we all know as Floridians the areas in each of our municipalities where the Tiger King people live. So in South Florida, in Dade County, they would be in the Redlands area or the Ghouls. I'm sure in, say, Central Florida, if you were to look in Osceola County, somewhere in St. Cloud, I guarantee (laughs) you there's Tiger King people there. So you don't have to look all that hard. If you're in North Florida, around the Big Bend and the Panhandle, there's an area in Wakulla County called Sop Choppy. I guarantee you, Sop Choppy and Panacea have a lot of Tiger King people there. So if you're a Floridian, the concept of Tiger King, the people in the show, um, the mystery behind who killed whom, that's a common occurrence in the state of Florida. So there's no really need for me to watch that show. I am pretty sure I grew up with someone just like that guy. When if 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 I could go back into my childhood as a kid, I won't say his actual name, but let's just call him let's just call him John. No, that John's not even interesting. Let's call him Balthazar. <laughs> so I get so there was a kid named Balthazar in my neighborhood. Say there was a kid named Balthazar. Are you saying actually, there was, or are you making this up? Actually, actually, there was a kid named Balthazar, so I should even use that. But I'll, I'll say it because this is totally not who Balthazar was, so it's fine. Because neither Bal- if Balthazar ever sees this, he'll know, hey, that's never me. And and if it was the other kid, um, he'll say like, hey, he's talking about me, but not my name's Balthazar. So it covers all the bases. So Balthazar um, 
was a smudgened type child. By smudgeon, we mean if you ever saw any of the uh, pre-child labor law pictures coming out of Pennsylvania or West Virginia, and there are a lot of coal mining kids, that's kind of what Balthazar looked. But it wasn't coal mining. It was just the 80s in Miami, and Balthazar just looked like that. None of, none of the rest of us looked like that. None of the rest of us looked like we were coal miners, except for Balthazar, who was the same age as the rest of us maybe a couple years older, um, but he was always a smudgeoned kid that never wore any shoes, who had a pool with no water in it, and I'm pretty sure his mom was on meth, looking back on it. So basically so you're Balthazar, saying... Yeah, Balthazar, if, if Balthazar is still alive and not currently incarcerated, he would be the equivalent of Tiger King. So you take the, the point of view that you don't need to watch tiger king because you basically lived it at some point or you you've witnessed it firsthand we all know a where that neighborhood uh, of the tiger king people live and we also know <laughs> probably four people removed from where an actual tiger king person is a tiger king person i like i like that yes he well, is his own noun tiger king person What's what's the last new thing you watched? Like last thing new to you? Well, I'm not as young as I used to be last time on the podcast, so my memory isn't all that great. So I think what you what would be better is if you were to run down kind of what new things are going on. The gentleman obviously um, saw it three times in the theater. Did you really? It you saw that three yeah, times? Absolutely, three times. I used it as an excuse to go on dates. But really, I just wanted to see the movie, and I was just like, oh, there's a great movie going on. I think it's called The Gentleman. Let's check it out. And I had already seen it prior, and I just wanted to see it again, and I just used going on a date as an excuse to see it for three times in a row. Not the same that. individual, by the way. I didn't think so. <laughs> and did you act every time like uh, you had never seen this movie before? By the third time, I probably was like, yeah, I already saw this movie. Never right. didn't say I've seen, seen it twice with two other people, but I've oh, okay. seen it before. You should see it. All right. Uh, I rewatched your favorite movie last night. I say your favorite movie. Um, I, wa I rewatched Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker finally last night. I say finally, like I had been dying to rewatch it. I really hadn't been. Um, I was kind of shocked myself that I only saw it the one time in the theater. Because I was like, oh, this is, it's the last Star Wars film. Of course, I'm going to see this probably multiple times. And I really saw it the one time, and I was good. I really had no desire to watch again. Uh, I finally watched it last night at home. Because I still bought the Blu-ray, <laughs> even though I wasn't a big fan of the movie. Because I basically have a collection going. So I'm like, well, I might as well get the Steelbook. Because, well, I got the other Steelbooks. Might as well do it. I did it. Finally rewatched it last night. I think it was worse. Actually, I know it was definitely a worse experience watching that movie a second time i'm not a fan of that movie i know you like it. so though. i've seen that movie not only have i seen it multiple times i've cried watching that movie i'm not gonna <sighs> i'm not gonna lie i've i've cried ever the, the, the exact i'll tell you the exact scene that i cry is I when you cried out of um, sadness princess, that it was so bad <laughs> when princess leia dies it gets me every single time i know it's coming but I it's that, that like finality when the cloth starts to where she starts to dissipate in the claw then um depresses back into the mattress and then right. she's gone for whatever weird reason it gets me every single time great callback to yoda um i liked how they do a lot of callbacks um throughout this entire movie i will defend rise of skywalker i'll defend a whole new trilogy of things because in my view, these movies, very much like Westworld, is not made for you. It's made for the other generation coming through that don't know any better, and they have something new to entertain themselves. And when they're 40, they're like, oh, man, those are some great times and all the nostalgia. If we were to watch, if someone were never to see Star Wars, and they exist, those non-Star Wars people out there um, that are... 30 and above, they exist. And when they see it for the first time by themselves, the first thing they'll think is these graphics are awful. This is an okay movie, but I really don't get it. 
I think that's the opinion of someone that ha if they see SARS for the first time in their 30s or above, like, well, I could I could see it, but it's not really that interesting, and the graphics kind of suck, and what's up with this claymation and puppet stuff? For us, it's okay because you know it's a callback to our childhood. So I think these next these current trilogy of stuff is going to be fine for a eight year old, twelve year old um, that grows up one day to be forty five and forty two. So to swing back off topic for a second, though, I didn't realize that Bobby uh, looked up the last time you were on the show. He's watching right now. I'm pretty sure I know the last time I was on the show. It wasn't 2013. I want to say the last time I was legitimately on the show, probably when I was in your home studio. I don't know the specific date, but it was after 2014, um, probably somewhere 2014 maybe 2015 at best. Well, actually, I think for this one, you weren't on the home and here at the home studio. I don't think you were. Uh, it was for Batman v Superman um, in 2016 okay. sure. was apparently the All last right, time yeah. you were on. And I could see Defending. that that was a that was an I'm episode pretty... that I'm, I'm sure I reached out to you to say, hey, you know, you, you need to be on the show for this one. Because I knew how I'm you sure, felt about Man always... of Steel and Defending it, like always, defending the DCU, DCU for, for life. <laughs> for life, no matter what. I got, the, I, got the, I got the back tattoo, the lower back tattoo, right above mm -hmm. uh, the ass crack that says, DC for life. Now, sometimes I have to explain what DC means, because some people are like, who's this guy DC? Like, no. Although, DC does stand for Daniel Craig. Well, there's that. That's a whole other subject with you. That's a whole other subject. So, so if people want to like review a bunch of old stuff and figure out, where oh Dan yeah, Craig comes you know what I, st I still remember that episode. It was, uh, yeah. oh man, what was that Steven Soderbergh film that we reviewed? Oh, that man, would have because I just saw it the other day. It would have been uh, side effects. Side effects. That's right. Yes, and we recorded that one in like February. I think that movie came out in February. Yeah, that was know, early, whatever year it was. A surprising early movie. Um, really good success, both critically and um, in the box office. But uh, that was a film. Yeah, that I mean, that was an episode for you and I, for you mostly. <laughs> that was, uh, I felt like it was a turning point um, with, I don't know what, but it was special. I, I would say go back, and, go back and <laughs> look for the side effects episode or side effect. Yeah, I don't remember what episode number that was. I'd have to look that up. Um, anyway, yeah, I rewatched re that last night. I kind of hated it. I I watched the whole thing because it looks gorgeous, but yeah, that, that movie. Anyway, I'm well, sure. That, I'll well, talk. that was part of it too. Like, if any, if if you if you remember any of kind of my review for a movie, I could give a rat's ass about the actual acting. That part, if you could give me that, then that's a bonus for me. A look pretty. Two sound pretty. Three, throw in a few British accents, and four, accents. give me some type of chase or thrilling stuff going on, and then uh, I'm set. Everything else is just fine, but number one, look pretty, sound pretty, British accent, give me a chase. Uh, so... so you can use that formula for all of the, like, say the last... I, I know you, you recently did a top top 10 for like 2019 and I was listening yeah. to some of that. So if you went through like the, the, the your top 10 of 2019 and, and try to draw a direct comparison to which movies that you reviewed in 2019 that looked pretty, um, sounded pretty, gave a chase, like uh, 1917, perfect example. Love it. Yeah, but that's a, actually a good film. <laughs> I mean, right. It, it goes well right. beyond well, just oh, hey, it looks good, and you know, gave a chase. I, I, I would make the argument that 1917 does a lot more than that. But that's all it needed. If it, it if it didn't have any uh, anywhere near the acting and quality and directing that it did, and it just had still had all those elements, it's going to be a good movie. So, how's uh, quarantine life treating you in Charlotte? North Carolina. How's it going up there? Uh, quarantine life isn't a whole lot different than my only my regular life. <laughs> okay. uh, I guess I've been practicing for quarantine for the last two years. Uh, finding ways to entertain myself. A lot of FIFA by myself. 
not against other people online, on easy mode, because I like to score a lot of goals. I don't play video games for the sake of playing video games. I like playing video games because the video games are always designed to fail themselves. But what I mean by that is, video games tend to create um, um, computer-generated players when they want to uh, progress over to the next year. And for the most part, it's not that those players stink, but they put them in really bad situations and don't really give them a chance to succeed. So I play it on easy mode with those computer-generated players that I think they're going to do well, destroy other players that I think they're going to do well. So my evil plan of computer-generated people taking over the planet um, works very well in the land of FIFA and Madden. Yeah, I was toying the idea with the idea of yesterday. I, I might still just, I've never played, I, or I shouldn't say I've never played baseball on a console, but it's been a long time. And I almost, I'm thinking about picking up MLB The Show just because I miss baseball since baseball's not happening. And I'm like, well, I could play baseball on my PlayStation and maybe it can kind of fill that void for a little bit. Same with FIFA. I haven't, I've played FIFA more recently. I've, I forget the last one I purchased a couple years ago. I've been thinking about buying the more recent one for the same reason since there's no, there's just no sports. So yeah, I don't know. I might, See, I might pick my one of those thing, up. My thing when it comes to baseball games, I've stopped playing them since Bases Loaded 2 and Baseball Simulator 2000. Bases Loaded. Um, yeah, Bases Loaded 1 and 2. Bases Loaded 1. Um, I bought Bases Loaded 2. And that's one of the reasons why I stopped playing baseball games. Because in Baseball Simulator 1000, for you olden people that remember that game, Baseball Simulator 1000 was a baseball-ish game set across the galaxies and across the universe where you could have special pitches, where you would literally burst someone into flames, or you could have a certain hit with a certain type of bat that would, once hit correctly, hit the pitcher, hit the second baseman, and hit the center fielder all the way to the back wall, and you have an inside-the-park home run. Um, bases loaded, the original one, you could also hit the batter. If you're, if you're noticing a theme, I like baseball when I could hit the player. And... In more recent games, not only can you, if you hit the player, they won't fight back. And that's not very interesting because that's not baseball in my opinion. So I really don't like games like MLB with the show because they kind of take that aspect of baseball that I like sometimes. I just want to hit someone across the head and have a little fight, work it out. Can't really do that in modern day baseball games anymore. Um, football, you could always tackle somebody really hard, get a penalty. 15 yard penalty makes you feel good. Um, in FIFA, I could tackle someone one really hard, um, tackle them hard again, try to get red card, play with 10 men. Just because I want to play with 10 men, I want to tackle someone really hard and injure them. But in baseball games, you can't really get that feeling of real baseball, which is baseball fights. <laughs> you, you talk about baseball like it's hockey. Like baseball fights happen all the time in baseball. I mean, they happen. They but do. They, they do happen, like but not that much. 70s baseball. So if you want to talk about something that I've been doing a lot lately, watching 70s and 80, 70s baseball and 1980s basketball, they were probably the two most violent eras of sports that you can think of. 80s basketball, just straight brawls. If there <laughs> needs to be any type of movie that's made from a basketball standpoint, uh, let's not have like Blue Streak or whatever it was called with Shaq and Penny Hardaway. Um, let's not have a Hoosiers. Let's have a real blue, blue chips, 1980 wasn't it? Blue like Chips. There you go. Yeah. Blue Chips. Yeah, Blue Streak, I think, was like God, Mark I remember, Lawrence. Maybe. I can't believe I remember the name of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think every, every, every kid from Orlando was forced to learn <laughs> yeah. and watch Blue Chips as part of your curriculum growing up and going out of high school. You weren't allowed to graduate from. Orange County school system, unless you saw blue chips <laughs> during the nineties. But that, they should have that. Have an entire basketball game um, movie. So if you if you get the concept of ballers, right, the wild and craziness and the cocaine and all that stuff that goes on in ballers, the TV show and football, and you add kind of like um, the violence of the, your MMA movies, like Warrior. That's 1980s basketball. 
they were flat out punching each other, and the ref would do absolutely nothing. That is a movie that I would like to see from a baseball standpoint. In 1970s, from a basketball standpoint, in 1970s baseball was very similar to that. Plus, you had really sweet chops and really sweet mustaches, even on the Yankees, who, for the most part, hate facial hair. All right. Uh, what else is new? What else have you been up to in your apartment there? You got a Peloton now? You, uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what, what's going on with you? Uh, I got the Peloton so I could have that while I'm watching my movies at the same time. Um, you, you ride really, really and watch movies the... at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, get to, you know, kill two burns with one stone. Um, especially if it's a show that I'm trying to binge watch, like Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon wasn't something that I really wanted to like dedicate a lot of intellectual time. Um, it's what did I say before? It's pretty. It sounds good. You have some British accents. There's a lot of chasing and running around. So I was very happy, not really pay attention to the level of poor acting or plot development or just batshit crazy stuff that was going on on the show. Um, so I could do like other things. Um, yeah. Anyway, I just thought I would check in with you, see how you're doing. It's been a while. Oh, I guess it's been so since Joker. I would say, oh yeah, Joker, Joker is another movie that I saw. So Joker, love that movie. Don't see Joker becoming um, uh really tied into anything other than that i would love it if it was just a whole entire series that didn't really include batman but always alluded to him as an individual but never really included him it just was that style of joker throughout the entire movie series that would be i think that would be a great way of just dc doing their best movie without trying to be the mcu the worst thing that DC did during the run of MCU Cinematic Universe was try to copy what they did as a movie process instead of just saying, you know, we're going to do our own thing. And we have our own characters and people are going to love them. And we're going to put the DC in DC and just make it like really dark. Yeah, I would agree with that. Speaking of DC, though, did you end up seeing Birds of Prey or not? I did not end up seeing Birds of Prey. That's that's like a perfect example of it would make me sad, to be honest with you, if I saw Birds of Prey. Why? Because I feel that that movie, um, it, 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 I don't really think it looks pretty. Um, I think the sound will be good, but not a lot of British accents. <laughs> and even the one not person who McGregor. should be doing a British accent, Does, isn't doing Ewan British McGregor, accent. not doing a British accent. So, you know, if, have it, if you if you and McGregor was doing his Scottish accent, I was like, you know what? This was worth watching because it would be more believable. <clears throat> I would say check it out. It's I didn't think it looked good for the trailers. And then I heard all this high praise when it was on theaters, though I never saw it in the theater. And then now it got released early, you know, earlier than expected digitally. So I went ahead and bought it and watched it. And it was it wasn't great. I mean, it was it was it was solid. It was a solid DC film. I've def you know I had heard people say it was the best DC film they'd ever seen, and that's just ridiculous. But uh, it was it was solid. I'd recommend it. Speaking you of recommendations, there's one yeah. thing that I really am going to miss seeing in the theater in 2020, and that is Tenet. I think Tenet was probably going to be. Well, we don't we don't know that you're not going to see it in a theater in 2020. I mean that that will hopefully okay. happen. Maybe December 30th of 2020. <laughs> because what the release date for that I think is what July. Yeah, not going to happen. So maybe December 30th of 2020 would be nice. But Tenant, I think Tenant is going to be. Yeah, July 17th. This is, by the way, this is this is saying a lot, and I know this is saying a lot. And I feel like it's going to earn it. I think that's going to be Christopher Nolan's best movie ever. Mm. All right. Memento. This is just a gut Inception, feeling you have. Dark Knight trilogy. It, it's like he, um, Prestige. I, I feel like he's taking all the best parts 
from all the movies that he's done and putting them all into Tenet to make this just cinematic, genius-looking type of movie that, like, destroys your brain, makes you think nonstop throughout the entire movie, but does a lot of kind of movie tricks to really hide the obvious, which is a classic Nolan technique um, in hiding the obvious so you pay attention to the other stuff. And also really gives you a good glimpse on whether or not the new Batman and Robert Patterson could be believable. Oh, because Batman's in the film. One of my uh, favorite things to do when it comes to films, when someone comes, when someone comes and takes over an iconic character, kind of like Daniel Craig and Layer Cake, um, is I want to see that movie because it gives you a really good glimpse on whether or not that person's going to be believable in that role. Daniel Craig is a perfect example who crushed in Layer Cake. So by the time Casino Royale came out, he was a thousand percent believable as someone who could play a different type of Bond in an action film. It'd be really interesting to see what Robert Patterson could do. The King, which also came out, I believe, last year on Netflix. Um, yeah, that, that was, was a glimpse of Robert Patterson. And I I liked a little bit of it. And be, only because of role, there wasn't enough of him to really see what he can do from a range standpoint um, to be able to play the Batman we need. Um, especially if you're going to give us a new Batman. This is what, probably the third Batman in how many years? I feel like third Batman in maybe seven, seven some odd years, maybe eight years. Mm, yeah, I don't know. When was the last Batman film? Or just Batman? Then, really... You're talking about uh, actor. You're, sorry. An actor, right. right. So like similar to Spider-Man, we've had, what, three people play Spider-Man and I feel like nobody really wants it anymore. And mm. you, and that's really bad to say from Spider-Man. If that happens with Batman, then that just destroys the entire DC, um, any plans for DC moving forward. What well, makes you think nobody wants Spider-Man anymore? I don't think that's true. <laughs> people will watch it only because it's Spider-Man, but I think people, in and of itself, people watch Spider-Man now because they hope to see him in the new recarnation of what the Avengers would be. But if it was just Spider-Man by himself, I'm like, oh, okay, it's Spider-Man by himself. Kind of like how when James mm -hmm. Garfield played it, it's like, okay, well, that's, okay, all right, he's another dude. All right, fine. Um, but that, that can happen, that can happen to Spider-Man because really there's, that can happen to Spider-Man, it can't happen to Batman. If that happens to Batman, that I think kills any, any hope for, DC to continue in the movie franchise business. So have it you, has to succeed. Have you taken advantage of any of the films getting released early on streaming? Like any of the like $20 rentals? Have you done any of that? Like Invisible Man or Emma or any, any of those films? Uh, I've, I've done a lot of the digital downloads of movies that were already in the theater. Right. None of the movies that have yet to go to theater that are straight to digital because um, of our situation that are, that are straight available to streaming. But Invisible yeah. Man is one of is one on the list that I definitely yeah, would I still be need interested to watch that. in watching. Yeah, tonight we did a kids movie night. We watched Trolls World Tour, which is the the first movie so far to completely give up a theatrical release and it is just straight up going streaming, which means they will definitely take a hit on that film. There, there's no way they're going to make just streaming what they were going to make in movie theaters. So yeah, pay twenty bucks. I was to hoping you said that the first movie that just that just gave up, and then I thought that was going to be the full stop. <laughs> I was like, oh well, like, you know that uh, that makes sense if it's like a troll sequel. They just gave up for halfway through, and it's and all of a sudden like the animation just goes away, and it's just two dudes talking. <laughs> it's just uh, Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake in front of microphones talking. No, not not even the character, just two dudes. The two dudes that happen to be on set. Like, look, we're not paying anybody anymore. Oh, so oh, okay. if you two, like, I want it to be like the grip and the um, the fader monkey. As a special shout out to you, just the grip <laughs> and the fader monkey, just talking <laughs> to each other. Like, kill time. It's like, all right, well, what else are we gonna do? And they're just talking about random stuff. So I was like, well, you know, I found a rash in a place where rashes shouldn't be, and it's like a lot of that kind of conversation um, between the the fader monkey and the gift 
in the in the in the grip to finish out whatever five hours of what the troll sequel happened to be. So we got we got a couple of questions from a friend of the show, Brendan, who's watching. Uh, first, he asked, right. uh, "What what is your favorite Spider Man movie?" God, <laughs> and you can definitely include Spider Man into the into the uh, Spider Verse. Which God help me, please, that you saw that. I did see it. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but I don't really like counting it. Just because it's animated. Well, yeah, I really don't. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't okay. like counting it because it's animated. Um, uh, I really like the '80s, '70s TV show Spider Man a hell of a lot better than all of the other movies. Um, jeez, the Spider Man that I liked the most. Well, I would have to say the Spider Man with uh, Kirsten Dunst getting kissed backward upside down the the first sam randy film the yeah yeah only because she's that's like iconic move and i dream of one day (laughs) being able to go on a date and recreating that moment um uh myself so that's that's that would be the one purely for that scene because i want to one day um uh kiss somebody upside down uh, his, se- his second question, I guess for me, uh, how was Trolls? Uh, Trolls was pretty good, actually. Um, I mean, uh, I've seen the first one. I have kids. I've seen the first one as well. And the first one is whatever. It's fine. But it's definitely not the best animated film I've seen. Uh, for what it is, it's okay. Um, but the second film, I think, is better. I, I kind of like the the world they build where they there's like different lands. I'm not spoiling anything, but there's like kind of different lands in this like troll universe, trolls universe, and each one is like kind of a different genre of music, and it's it's kind of fun. So I mean, it's still not great, but for that world, it's it's better than the first movie. So let okay. me ask you a question about troll. All right. First question: between the first movie and the second movie, did they increase the troll toll? And where is the Billy Goat? And I got I got nothing here, man. <laughs> so there's no troll toll. There's no troll trolls. toll. No. You don't have to pay the trolls toll to get in the boys' hole. No. So you just you're able to go into the boys' hole automatically without right. even having to pay the oh, troll yeah. toll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's that's pretty interesting. And what about the what about the billy goat? So one of the biggest part of the troll is when you're crossing the bridge in Billy Goat's Gruff is that there's a billy goat in there, um, and you can't have it's clearly a troll never without billy clearly goat's never gruff. seen any of these movies. Uh, so not movies. Billy Goat's Gruff is an actual book, children's book. No, I, with a troll I, in I, it. I, I get what you're saying. You never seen these two films. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, if there's no Billy Goat and there's no troll toll to get in the boy's hole, then I, I don't understand the whole premise of the movie. It just it's just lost on me. Well, it's definitely not for you. It's just it's it's just a dude under a bridge. I, I mean, you got that anywhere. Don't, Is I there a bo- bridge? I wouldn't bother. The, the, I think there's a bridge. There's a couple bridges. Is is the to- is, at least at least is the troll under the bridge? There's trolls everywhere. In these, in these, but specifically under bridges, <laughs> under bridges, because if it's a waste of everyone's time, that trolls don't have a whole lot. I don't know if you know this about trolls; they really don't have a whole lot. The only thing that they do have is the ability to live under bridges, safe and sound and comfortably. No other creature in cinematic universe or in real life can comfortably live under a bridge, except for trolls. That's the only thing that they have. And apparently, this movie's taken that away from them. I think it's really an injustice to all I could, trolls. I could tell that you were right there, campus. getting ready to rent it until this conversation, and now you're done. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like a waste. I mean, if if this is a, it is an injustice to all trolls everywhere. So trolls, if you're listening, if you ever watch this, I had your back. I believe that your ability to live under bridges peacefully, happily, collecting tolls is a very important part of your essence. And I, for one, do not like that Hollywood has taken that away from you. 
Because now the expectation is if you see a troll, when you do see a troll, finally the day that we actually see a troll under a bridge in real life, we're not going to pay any toll, and we're not going to have a billy goat. So the troll's going to be like, what the hell, man? I spent all this cachet collecting tolls. I even made them more toll-friendly. Like, you can have an app, and you can cross. You don't have to throw any coins anymore. You don't have to sacrifice any children. You could just use the app and get through, because that's how I, you know, make my living. And now we've taken that away from us. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very sad. It's very sad. I mean, this movie is just ruining it. We're going to have an entire generation of people refusing to pay trolls their toll. Uh, anything else? Any last things uh, you've watched you want to bring up? Anything you want to share with the people before we get out of here? So I feel like there's a lot of movies that I did watch and a lot of shows that I did watch in 2019. Um, uh, if, you, if you list out some of them, I could probably give like a quick thumbs 20, up or thumbs down 2019 you say yes i have not seen parasite so that is on my oh, list but man. the director i've loved since no piercer um so if anything what i love the most about parasite is that it gives people the opportunity i'm pretty sure we reviewed snow piercer on one of our early episodes yes yes um i, I feel like that movie does not get the credit it deserves. And I feel that now that Parasite's doing so well, people will go back and see Snowpiercer. So Parasite's definitely one of them. Um, that, that is, that is high, very high on my to-do list. Yeah, and that's on Hulu right now, man. Check, I don't know if you have a Hulu subscription, but uh, check that's it out. Said it's on Hulu. But yeah. uh, Hulu has got some good uh, indie high level stuff right now. They've got Parasite. Uh, I guess they have a lot of Bong Joon Ho's uh, filmography on there right now. So I hear. I don't know how much of it, but I think the host is on there and a lot of other stuff. Um, another gr great, great, great indie film that I just finally saw and talked about on the last podcast, uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is on Hulu right now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, you saw I've that? I've seen that it's on Hulu. I have not oh, seen okay. That. You ch check that out. That's on Hulu. Yeah. Hulu is, uh, getting, they're basically like the criterion collection right now of, of streaming services. Uh, they've got some stuff. Uh, Hulu I, I, was on the cusp of almost they weren't crackle, crackle but they were really close yeah they were really close to that for i would say about five six years ago hulu was right on there in that crackle level mm. um so it's good to see that hulu's like stepping the game up and not becoming crackle although crackle has a lot of great programming um barney fife is on crackle <laughs> um sanford and son is on crackle so they have a lot of great content um, on Crackle. Um, but what what else that has been out? I mean, you saw 1917. I'm trying to think of like a great or at least very good films in the last few months. Parasite's a big one. But yeah, nothing that's coming to mind. I know we chatted back and forth during the Oscars. Yes. Um, about the show itself. <laughs> About the show itself and the movie. Uh, the show itself. The show itself. Oh, yeah. You asking me my opinion on the show itself? I know your opinion. On you the know show my itself. opinion. I thought it but was I, just yeah. terrible. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just bad. Uh, and uh, man, I would. I I was watching it this year, thinking, man. There's a really decent chance I'm just gonna skip this next year, and that says a lot. Like I enjoy Oscar night. I say that I'm probably I'm, because I enjoy Oscar night. I'm probably still gonna watch it, but it was it was really bad. That it I I'm sorry. I guess maybe I'm in the minority, but that, I think that show needs a host. That's that's where I am. A proper host. Yes, I mean a ho but just a host. Right now it's they don't even have that. I'll take anybody. I mean, trust me. There's definitely been some bad hosts. And, yeah, that that show needs us for sure. Um, what else? What else has been going? Like things that we've watched that's been really good. I'm trying to at, think of what to ask if you've seen. Man, I'm not prepared. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. But definitely check out Parasite. Check out Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Basically, check out Hulu. Um, 
The only other stuff I've been watching is, uh, well, well, I mean, I'm going to talk about it on the show on Sunday, but I, fi- I finally watched at least one episode of a show that uh, Bobby and Yasha have been just badgering me on for a long time that I have not watched, which is Breaking Bad. Um, I so you've just, never seen Breaking I've, Bad? I've never seen Breaking Bad. I just watched the first episode last night. You know what? I'm proud of you. Because this <laughs> is a classic. this is a classic Carlton move. <laughs> the classic Carlton move is knowing something is critically acclaimed, yet refusing to watch it. Right. For, n- not for any other reason, but because everyone else says I should be watching it. There's a lot of shows that I just like, no, I have no desire to watch it. I'm completely aware of how great it sounds or movie it sounds. And I just don't want to watch it because everyone else loves it. I did not watch Breaking Bad while it was um, while it was out. I waited until after the last episode ended. And then I started watching Breaking Bad. Now, I binge watch probably like five or six episodes a day. So if you want to do that math, you could see how much time I spent watching Breaking Bad and binge watching it. But I deliberately did not want to watch it while everyone else is watching it. I'm doing the same thing with Walking Dead or Fear well, the Walking yeah. Dead. Walking Dead, I just gave up on eventually. I was definitely watching that. And that show kind of killed it for the same me thing with very Billions. early on. Billions yeah, with, is another show. With that Breaking I'm not Bad, it was like watch. it was just a show that I I didn't jump on when it was new. And as it progressed, and yes, it was getting a lot of acclaim. I obviously recognized that and considered like, oh, should I jump in? But by the time I was really seriously considering it, it was just one of those things where I was like, man, I'm so far behind and I'm already watching all these other things that I'm behind on. And now I got to start a show over. And I I just Googled real quick. I mean, I'm looking at 62 episodes to watch this entire show. And yeah. Oh no, it's it's Game of Thrones level of commitment. Yeah, it's going to be a commitment. The question is, I'm not giving my opinion yet. I'll give my opinion on on the Flicker Effect on Sunday, but I'll give my opinion on that first episode of Breaking Bad. But uh, I will say I'm going to watch a couple more, obviously, and before I give like a definitive opinion. But the question is, like, will after watching like three or four episodes, will I be like hooked enough that I'm like I I don't care if it's 62 episodes. I got to watch them all. That'll be that'll be. Have the you question. seen The Wire? I've never seen The Wire. Okay, all right. Let's I know that's a big one for you. All the things you haven't seen The Wire. I haven't. You haven't seen Breaking Bad. Have you seen Oz? No, I have not seen Oz. I can't say Oz is all up right. there on the list. All right, so you can't see Oz is not up there on the list. That's really interesting. Well, there's, um, there's just too much good stuff out there, man. Sorry, Oz is not up there. Like Oz and The Wire. Well, um, and The Wire, I would... Well, I mean, I don't know. You tell me if I had to watch one or the other, I have a feeling you'd say The Wire. I would say you need to watch The Wire before you even get really deep into Breaking Bad, to be perfectly honest with you. Ooh. Because <laughs> honest, like Breaking Bad, what makes Breaking Bad great is one character. What makes The Wire great is that if you took that one character in Breaking Bad and made 12 of them in one show, then you have The Wire. You have 12 character-developed writing and quality of acting um, that you have in Walter White throughout the entire Wire series. And to make it more palatable for you, there are not as many episodes in The Wire as there are in Breaking Bad. All right. What else do I desperately need to watch, in your opinion, during this well, quarantine I that I really said, don't have I any extra said, time during? I would have said Deadwood, but I feel like with Westwood, Westworld, Westworld. It, kind of, it kind of messes with what I want Deadwood to be. Okay. So how about, how about Boardwalk Empire? I've seen Boardwalk Empire, but I haven't finished it. I started okay. it. I was like three or four episodes in, basically. It was one of these random weekends where, I, I mean, this wasn't recently. This was, I forget how long ago. I was just like, ah, I hear so good good things about this show. And I remember loving that first episode. That was a first episode that hooked you, in my opinion, right off the bat. I think, what, Scorsese directed that first episode, didn't he? Um. Oh, really? I, did, I wasn't aware of that. I, I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, I'd have to look it up to be sure, but I think he did. Um, 
But then I, I remember feeling like two or three episodes in being like, oh, okay, well, it showed that he directed the first one, but it, <laughs> he definitely didn't direct the rest of these. And I say that it weren't bad. Don't get me wrong. I just, they weren't the same. Have you seen, so now you're going to get deep into the Carlton's well of, of what I have highly acclaimed. Mm -hmm. Not everyone would agree with this list, but that's okay. Have you seen Strike Back? I haven't even heard of Strike Back. Oh, what so Strike, Strike Back? Back is, it's on Cinemax. So keep that in mind when we're talking about Strike Back. Okay. So Strike Back, the plot of it is, it is a, uh, like a MI6 uh, type of, you know, uh, what works type of group. So think, think along the lines of Jason Bourne, you know, behind the scenes, behind the scenes, um, kill objective people, but there's a lot of other stuff going on. What I, two things I find fascinating about Strike Back. A, there is a British guy playing an American in an Australian, uh, no, there's an Australian playing an American and an American playing a British guy. Which makes absolutely no sense. It's one of the reasons why I hate Boudonk Saints, because they could have just hired regular Irish people to play those roles. But for some whatever weird reason, the Australian that plays the Eng an American, an American from Oklahoma, that plays an Englishman, for whatever weird reason, seems to work. Um, Strike Back kind of like follows a Law and Order type of formula where you'll pretty much see the same thing each episode. There's going to be um, some type of nefarious person that um, may kill something or somebody that they have to capture. Um, the American, the rough guy, um, has a romantic interest that he bangs because at the end of the day, this is Cinemax. So when I say it's Cinemax, it's everything that you know Cinemax to be. He bangs and he bangs well. Uh, and several times in an episode, <laughs> he'll team up with his guy. Shenanigans will happen where obviously their initial purpose of the operation will go horribly wrong. Somehow they survive and the bad guy gets away. So they have to go find him again. And it's just really that over and over and over again. Yet it works every single time. Did I mention that there was a lot of banging in every single episode because of Cinemax. Yeah, I never heard of that one, so I can't say it'll be high on the list, but I'll keep it. It's in high. It, it needs to be. It needs to be. It's quality banging. All right. If there were one more show that you felt like, man, this is an absolute must watch. David has time that he doesn't really have <laughs> during this quarantine. What would it be? What would be your one more show? One one last show before we wrap this up. Oh. Uh... If I had to be really honest, not my guilty pleasure stuff, but a really good show that you haven't seen. Because I know you've seen Luther. Sure, sure. I've seen Luther. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> Luther needs to be it. I have, if you I've haven't seen, seen, an, seen Luther. I've seen an episode of Luther. I have not watched all of Luther. All right. Luther would be it, but uh, but I would also say Broadchurch. Okay. All right. That That's your pick. Luther first, and then Broadchurch. Yeah, well, Wire first, then well, Luther. Yeah. I mean, one, ad then... your one additional would be Luther. Yeah, yeah absolutely, because Idris Elba, I mean, come on. The Black James Bond. Maybe someday. We'll see. Uh, always in our hearts. True. He doesn't need to have to actually act it out. We just know he's James Bond. Uh, with that, any last things before we wrap it up? We should probably get going. No, this was fun. It's been a long time. Probably it has been a long, long time. We were just kind of winging it. That's why it was just kind of like, hey, uh, let's, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to check in with you. It's been a while that you've been on the show, I guess, since 2016, to be exact. And with everything going on, uh, I want to see how you're doing, see how it's going up there in Charlotte. And, uh, yeah, this has been fun. Be on more often shout out 
shout out to this wet bandit sweatshirt that i'm rocking wet wet bandits nice it's a christmas hoodie isn't it Technical? see that's the great thing about this is that it looks so legit because it says wet bandit electrical and plumbing nice. that uh people like typically take a second look so this was like the actual you know, <laughs> that's awesome yeah that, so a lot good. of people they'll just see it and they'll take a second look like hey and like yeah you get it <laughs> that's good that's good well yeah man thanks for joining us or joining me here on the show uh as you can see uh for anyone watching who's new to this yeah we're we're streaming episodes on youtube now um this one will only be on youtube but most of them are on youtube and still on the podcast feed so check that out as well um we will still be streaming our normal show sunday nights we'll be doing one this sunday should be at nine eastern six pacific and yeah, I'll talk about my first episode of Breaking Bad and some other stuff that I've seen, including uh, my, my rewatch of Rise of Skywalker. And uh, yeah, yeah, check us out over right here on YouTube. Um, any, la any last word, Carlton? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank thanks for being here, man. Uh, with that, uh, I'm David Lott. I'm Carlton Card. Peace up, A-Town down. It's been fun.